go. Have you or someone you know had your life turned upside down because of your past? Of course I have. Everyone does background checks now, which makes it hard to bounce back. What do you believe? I believe your background shouldn't hold you back. It, sh- it should pay you back. This podcast will inspire you, motivate you, and inform you with everything you need to rise above your past and, and not be afraid to say, go, go ahead, check my background. My name is J. Dan Gum, and this is Background Check. You already know. Let's go. You can check my background. I'm a forgiving felon, so tell them that I won't back down now. You can bet I won't live in regret. It's time to earn some respect. You are tuning in to Background Check. Hey everyone, welcome to Background Check Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Dan Gum, and we believe your background shouldn't hold you back. It should pay you back. Do you know that you need to put a demand on the background that stole from you? The Bible says he that stole, he needs to restore, repay seven times what he stole. So do you put a demand on your background? You can start from wherever you are. Even if you're already out of prison, listen to this on audio or YouTube or if you're in prison right now, your background can pay you back. Hey, listen, um, thanks for being here. As always, we're brought to you by Forgiven Felons, but we do have some more sponsors coming up. Forgiven Felons, we believe your background shouldn't hold you back. It should pay you back. No, that's a background check. Forgiven Felons, we believe in helping people with the past realize their future, and we're so glad to be here. We are, I don't know if you saw my dog. He's on the ground laying down there. Um we're so glad to be here. Uh, man, we're going over uh, over three years now. Over three years. May 28th, 29th, I think we launched our very first uh, podcast. And um, and we've been going ever since. And now we're doing video, and we're so glad we get to do video. We're so thankful to uh, one, one organization donated all of this uh, camera equipment, switchers, all this stuff. And uh, we're so thankful. We're working out a, a deal with them where the, we're going to be able to give them credit. We can't wait to say their name and give them credit. Um, but they're so humble, and uh, we're so thankful for them that that, um, that that they provided the stuff that we get to do, so uh, that we get to use. So we're excited to be here once again. Thank you wherever you're listening from, uh, whether you're listening in the weight room, whether you're listening in bed, whether you're listening in, uh, in the car, in prison. Welcome to the show. Welcome on Spotify, Apple, Pando. Welcome wherever you're listening. And um, if you notice, uh, Snowman's here, but um, my co-host, Jessa, uh, is not here right now. And they're at a birthday party, and I needed to record. And, you know, there's some times where she's not available. So you're just going to have to deal with this cuteness instead of my daughter's cuteness. So um, she's going to be sad because she loves to say hi to you guys, and she, she loves to do videos. So... Uh, but anyway, I, I got some announcements, man. We got a great interview coming up. Woo, this guy, Steve, brother Steve. He's been out, I think, four years now, and uh, he's been amazing. He wasn't at Forgiven Felon's house, but he's been a part of our ministry uh, for so long now, and he's just been amazing. We've been we've been uh, privileged to walk part of his journey with him, uh, some of his medical journey since he's been out. He's been uh, he's on dialysis, and he's he's going through some things. But we've been we've had the privilege of doing life with him, and he does life with us, and we're so thankful for what he does for forgiven felons as well. So you're gonna enjoy the interview. But we got some announcements real quick. Um, you know, number one, you're gonna see Snowman from time to time in our video, because if you weren't if you if you weren't seeing him, you'd have to hear him outside uh, our studio barking because our studio is a, is at in our backyard, and. Uh, So uh, I don't want to hear him bark the whole time. So we have him inside, and um, sometimes he's in my lap. Sometimes he's in the lap of the guests. So, Um, But anyway, so, um, hey, tonight, today is, uh, we're recording this and releasing this on uh, August 14th, Monday. And um, so if you're seeing this after the 14th, do not not try to go to this church. But tonight, celebrate recovery. I'm speaking at Celebrate Recovery at Grace Grace Community Church in Corsicana, Texas. And um, and I love I love sharing at Celebrate Recovery. Guys, when you get out, guys, when you get out, always make sure that you um, go share your story whenever you're asked. And uh and and because that's how you your background pays you back is when you share your story, when you share a story when people ask. All right. Let's see. Uh Kyle Unit, we're gonna be there on Wednesday. Oh, snowman wants to come up. 
somebody must have come. Hey, buddy, what you doing, huh? Look, yeah, what you doing, yeah. Kyle Unit, we're coming to you, baby. Social Dallas worship is coming with us. Um, I think we're going to be in the gym. It may be hot in there, but we're going to come out, and uh, who knows? You never know what God's going to do. All right, so uh, Tucker Unit, Arkansas, Tucker, Arkansas, Thursday night, we're coming in. We, we are so excited to be with you, Tucker, Arkansas. Some of you have written, and we can't wait to meet you face-to-face, so make sure y'all pack that. I think it's I think it's a chapel or gym. I think i got a little chapel. Make sure you pack that chapel out. You're not going to lick me. Okay, stop, stop, stop. No lick. Uh, okay, Hughes Unit. Man, guys, we were at the Hughes Unit last Wednesday. I'm going to do maybe a smaller check-in video uh, and pictures with what went on at the Hughes Unit. It was amazing to see those guys graduate from cognitive uh, uh, intervention class, uh, life skills, uh, smart recovery, uh, peer, peer support coach, life coach, or something. I don't I remember I wasn't there for the graduations, but I was there for the graduations. <coughs> but I got to hear some speeches. Oh, my gosh. Guys, all of you guys that spoke at, at your commencement last Wednesday from the Hughes unit, amazing. You guys touched my heart. All right. And then uh, then we had church. We had church. And um, I spoke a little bit. I read from Philippians chapter 1, which sometimes Paul's heart to the Philippians church his church is, is kind of like my heart to you guys, the church behind bars. And uh, so I'm so I was so excited to be there. We had so much fun. We got I got stuck in count a little bit. And uh, but yeah, I waited and, and made sure we got all the videos. And uh, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy some of the pictures and videos. Snowman, you gotta behave, buddy. You gotta behave. All right. You gotta behave. Stop it. All right. Let me get through with a view. Uh, first of all, listen, all of you are writing in for prayer requests. Um, just know that my family, including my daughters, pray for you. We pray for your parole. Those of you who talk, uh, tell us that you're coming up for parole, we, we pray for your parole. Uh, we pray for your healing. Not only your healing, but there's some of you have who have uh, told us that your your parents, your, your, your parents have cancer, your family members have cancer. Uh, I just want you to know we're praying. We're praying for you guys too, all right? Um, and then we are, snowman, stop, behave. Um, we're praying. Some of you are talking about just losing all hope, man. Um, we're coming against hope, hopelessness in Jesus name. We're praying for you. Uh, we're praying uh, for your marriage. Those of you who have marriage issues. Those of you who have family issues. We're praying for every, every prayer request you send. We're praying for it. I promise. Okay. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things. Listen, guys, uh, those of you who want applications. Okay. If you're out of state, I can send you one, but if you're not going to make parole and be able to interstate compact within six months, um, we need to wait until then. Same thing in Texas. Uh, if you're in Texas, uh, let's just wait till you're within a year of your review. Okay. Once you're within a, a year, then we can send you an app. There's a couple reasons why guys. Uh, number one, we update our app, you know, sometimes yearly. And so we don't want to send you an app too early and then come out with a new app. And then you have to fill out a, a whole new app may have some different questions on it. Um, we may take some questions off. We may add some new questions, whatever. So we're always changing. All right. So that's another reason we don't want to send you an app too soon. All right. Um, some of you are still writing, uh, thanking us for, you know, taking SOs, you know, taking people that have committed sex crimes. Uh, listen, and then that somebody wrote and, uh, and kind of, kind of got on to us for using the term sex offender. And, uh, and I just want you to know, those of you who, who don't like the word sex offenders, uh, I know it sounds like an awful label, and, um, but here's the deal. It's just a, it's just a label, and it's not, it's not who you are. It's not who you are. And when you hear me say, you know, sex offender, when you hear me say forgiven felon, we got it on our shirt. The word felon's on my shirt. It doesn't mean I, that I accept that label as something I identify with. But I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm also not gonna. You know, forget the fact that I'm a felon. Okay, I'm a forgiven felon. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna just try to hide that word. Um, and I just want you to know that if I say sex offender, it doesn't mean that I'm calling you um, a sex offender. All right. And 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 you don't need to take it that way. Listen. A sign of maturity, spiritual maturity, is when you can become less offended. When you become offenseless, in other words, you don't get offended by anything, okay? Except the devil. You get offended by the devil. Get offended by the devil. 
All right, but when another person is using the term sex offender, uh, and, and and I've said uh, I've said SOs before, okay. And this person that wrote, I'm not dogging you, I'm not dissing you, I'm not going to say your name, but uh, that way people don't know who you are. But I'm just saying you also you also said use the the, the letters SO. Well, SO still means sex offender, so it's all it it, it all determines. Your heart determines what you hear. If you know you're not a sex offender, you're just somebody who committed a sexual offense crime, according to the state, then know that in your heart. If I slip up, you know, when you get out, I call I call you a registered person because that's what we call people that get out and have to register, you know. So I've I've gotten used to that. But at the same time, don't take offense. Just um, know that when when you hear that term, uh, if you take offense to it, then you're accepting that as a label. So don't. And just let other people, let, let them say it. Uh, I don't say it all the time, but, um, but you know, I got a lot of things running through my mind. And so just know that if you hear that, if you hear that phrase, you don't have to let it identify you. Just the same way when I hear I'm a forgiven felon, I don't let the word felon identify me. Okay. So I hope that encourages you, man. I'm not, I'm not getting on to you, chastising you, but uh, just know that you don't have to. If anybody, whether it's an accident or on purpose, calls you that, you don't have to let that define who you are. All right? I love you. I love them all. I love everybody who's committed a sex, sexual offense, everybody who the world calls sex offender. I love people who are called murderers. I, hey, I, I still get called a drunk. I do. I still get called a DWI offender, according to my old court. You know, um, but I don't, I don't care. I don't let it offend me. I don't let it take offense to it. So I love you. I hope you hear my heart when I say that. Uh, all of you, any of you, there may be more of you that feel the same way as this gentleman, but I just want you to know that um, you don't have to You don't have to accept it as a label, even when we do say it, okay? Uh, I think, is there anything else? Man, I love you guys. I love you guys. Hey, make sure you're listening to Real Vita TV. Make sure you go into the audio podcast to listen to Crypto Christ. Uh, make sure you listen to Worthy People. I love Cody. And Julia, I love them to death. And um, but also make sure you listen to Social Dallas. Oh my gosh, today's this week's message, guys. Robert's back, Pastor Robert's back on uh, from sabbatical. And uh, man, you're going you're going to love this message. You're going to love it. And um, and so anyway, thank you for all who write in. Uh, they do have a PO box in Dallas, so uh, I'm not going to list it on our on our thing. But uh, tell your people to look it up. I think they have a PO box in Dallas. You can write. So um, love y'all, and uh, you're going to enjoy Brother Steve today. And um, don't forget to let your background, make your background pay you back, not hold you back. Make sure you realize that that uh, even though you have a past, you have a future. I love you. We love you. The gums love you. Forgiven felons loves you. And um, be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. All right? And... Um, yeah, stay strong this week. Stay strong. And we pray for you at the end, but I'm going to pray real, pray real quick. Father, in Jesus' name, I just lift everybody up who's going to watch this interview today with Steve, Brother Steve. Lord, I pray that they hear his heart. I pray that they hear your gospel message through Steve. I pray that, uh, Lord, I pray that whoever's watching this today that feels hopeless, whoever's watching this today that uh, feels rejected because of parole denial, I feel that, uh, I pray that whoever's watching this today that is struggling in their family relationships, maybe in their marriage, maybe with their kids, Lord, I pray that uh, whoever's listening to this, they may be out here or inside prison that is feeling down today, Lord, that, that's feeling unvalidated, that, that they know they're validated because of you and what you did on the cross. Lord, I pray for people that are, that are struggling with identity, that they realize their eyes are open and their hearts open to you, who gives us our best identity. Thank you, Lord. We pray a blessing over this interview and over, over the listeners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Love y'all. Enjoy this interview. Brother Steve Reese, welcome to Background Check Podcast. <laughs> Why, thank you for having me, brother. Man, uh, everybody, this is my friend. Steve Reese, I've known him for, how long have we known each other? Four years. Four years. I'm so glad uh, that you're here. And it sounds like everybody else is glad that you're here, too. So, uh, so uh, man, Steve, um, 
Now, I think I met you at, at church, mm-hmm. at Trinity. Yes. And uh, I don't even remember how, like, we first met. I, can you remember, like, did someone connect you with me, me with yes. you? Yes, it was uh, my oldest sister. Through her and my youngest, I mean, my oldest daughter, they uh, invited me to come and visit Trinity when I came home. Uh, being that I did go to my previous church, and uh, they informed me about you, the ministry God had given you. And uh, I came in you, to you and approached you, and we exchanged information. You were supposed to get back with me, but I didn't hear from you. Uh-oh, you're about to tell on me. Uh, I got to call it <laughs> like it is. And I, I got in my feelings and everything, and I said, man, I'm not going to mess with this dude. He, you know, but, you know, Holy Spirit has a way of doing his part, you know. Yeah. And uh, when I did approach you, and we talked about that in the hallway. We did. And, and you did eventually uh, get the opportunity, you know, the selfish me, uh, not thinking that, you know, man that has a life you know, freedom and now ministry that he, he needed time to do things in the time that God would direct him. And, uh, we had that conversation and, and from that point on, uh, we, we started communicating. We, we've been friends ever since. Ever and, since. And then ever you've been since. coming to, coming to the events, the open houses, yeah, yes. the different Bible studies, uh, sometimes on, on, on Sunday mornings, now that you know where it is and yes. that we're right next to your house. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so man, but you have been, you've been a blessing to us in so many ways. First of all, your infectious smile. I'm glad that we got to know you because after that, that, that one moment where we reconciled everything, mm-hmm. um, it, I don't think there was a time where we were at church where we didn't try to say hi to each other yes, at that always. point, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and even the guys, Michael Pugh was like, Hey, have you seen Steve Reese? You know, and, and, uh, you know, and then you started going through some things, uh, yeah. medically and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and yeah. So talk about that. Well, you know, um, uh, even when I was incarcerated, uh, I went through some, uh, real, uh, challenging moments with my health. At okay. one time I, I was, um, on in hospice. You were on wait wait wait. You were on hospice in while in you were in prison? prison. Yes, at John Seeley. You know, Ooh, I've been there. I've been yes, there. yes. I was in hospice care, and uh, so I was there, Jay, and you know, and I was just asking God. You know, I I, I know one day I have to leave this realm, but I didn't want to leave from there and being alone. Okay, so just so everybody knows, the the John Seeley is the medical hospital down in uh, in, in Galveston. Galveston, right? And I went there for a big thing, a cellulitis on my arm. They didn't know what it was, so they rushed me down there. So I stayed there for three or four days. But but you were you were on hospice, right? So what were they what were they telling your family that you know the options were? Because I know well, Morris, you know you've met Morris right. that lived there. Mm-hmm. Um, he had cancer, prostate cancer, and mm-hmm. they, they let him go, I think, because of that, because mm-hmm. they didn't want to deal with treating him. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Daniel, a former resident of Forgiven Felons, right. you know, he was on life support. Right. And and the, they told the family, hey, if he doesn't respond the next whatever, how many days, you mm-hmm. know, we have to pull the plug. Yeah. And because he was in the state, the care of the state, yes. they had the right mm-hmm. to pull the plug or not. Mm-hmm. Not even family. Right. Isn't that crazy? Yes. So what, were, how, what was the conversation with your family well, like, and what was your... What was your mental health like at that point? My mental health was, uh, man, there's nobody but God that kept me to a place where that I didn't give up and a place to where I didn't allow the 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 pity syndrome to hit me. Because uh, at that time, my my uh, I was dealing with uh, congestive heart failure and a rapidly declining uh, kidney f- uh, failure. And uh, then I had pneumonia in both lungs. And when I went, when that, when I was at the Ellis unit, and when they ambulance got me there, you know, and everything, they, they, they for a couple of days, they did administer what they could. And then after they, they felt like they couldn't do anything else, then they put me in an ambulance, and uh, they, they uh, caravaned me with, with uh, two officers in the ambulance. And one officer in a vehicle in front of them wow. and drove me to John Seeley. Wow. And when I got to John Seeley, they did many tests and the doctor came in and they told me that I was going to be in hospice. Uh, just like that. Just like that. And and I asked them to contact my family. My major contact was my oldest sister, 
Because my mom, you know, elderly and everything, I wanted her to be the liaison between the doctors and everything. And so so it was difficult for her because I didn't hardly ever, I didn't get a chance to speak to her because I couldn't get up and go right. to a phone. Right. So I, I can't exactly say other than that uh, I'm sure it was difficult for my family to know that I was sick and that sick and they couldn't communicate with mm. me wow. and vice versa. So uh, wow, that that was I, a, yeah. that was a challenging moment. I didn't know I didn't know all that about you, man. About the, yes. your time in John Seeley. Mm -hmm. I knew you had. Let's see, like right now out here, you're uh, you're dealing with what what out here? You're on dialysis. I'm on dialysis, uh, and uh, I have a atrial. A Wasn't there something else that you went through? Was there something yes. cancerous or something? Yes, or? I I had cancer. Okay. Uh, when I got diagnosed, when when I came home. I, first, I had a stroke in uh, 2018, I, I went, uh, was it July? No, August of 2018. Yeah, because you came home in July of 2018, I right? Came, I came home in June. June, okay. So 2018, just a couple months after that. Yes, 2018, August, I had a stroke. And when I had that stroke, you know, I had, you remember you come uh, Trinity oh, yeah. and you oh, guys yeah. helped yeah, me all great. Along. Yep. Yeah, they came along board and supported me greatly, you know. And uh, and I had to go through some rehab, uh, uh, speech therapy, physical therapy, and all of these things. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, I, I didn't really know at the time the uh, gravity of of how what 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 exactly you were going through at that point. And looking back, then I, when I talked to you at one point, I realized how bad everything was and mm -hmm. what you were going through. Mm -hmm. I felt bad for not staying in more contact with you because man, I was like, uh, I was like, man, this dude is going through it and we're just calling to check on him when we ought to be doing more. And, uh, but I just wanted you to know that, man, I felt, cool. and I mean, we stayed in contact and I know yeah. you appreciated that, but I mean, mm -hmm. man, I, I look back and go, man, I didn't really know you were going through it, through it, through yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, then, yeah. And then we didn't know what all you went through before you got out. So yes. if we'd have known that too, man, well, I'd be like, man, what is going on? But to see you sitting here today. I don't look like, you I'm going to tell you, you, I don't feel you like. You don't look like what you've been, been through. through. And what I'm going through, Jay, it ain't over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what yeah. he's touched, right. he will perfect and complete. Come on. And uh, he's going to use it for his glory. I might not like how it feels and right. how, how it sounds, sometimes even how it tastes. But I know Jay, just like I know my name, yeah, he's going to use it yeah. for my good. That's right. And for his glory. So, man, you know, and even now, man, you know, I, uh, when, I, when, I, when I, after the stroke, uh, then uh, I went through COVID three times. The third time I went through COVID, that's what shot my kidney numbers all the way down. Mm. And then I had to have a surgery to implant a graft in my left arm okay. so that I could do dialysis because I was at stage four. And it took me right to stage five, mm. and they had to hurry up and do that surgery. Okay. Uh, now, but by the grace of God, when I got diagnosed, got the surgery done, uh, a month after that, I got diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. So after that, I started uh, about a month after that, the the, the uh, graft was healed enough yeah. to where I could start the di dialysis. Mm. At that moment, I had to move from my house to my oldest sister's house so that I would have someone there with me that could transport me from from dialysis as well as to cancer treatments. Right, yeah. And God is so awesome. He's either everything or nothing at all, bro. And when, when, I, when I moved to my sister's house the first couple of times, you know, uh, she and my nephew, they took me, you know, to my treatments and all of that. But God gave me the strength, Jay, and to where eventually I was able to drive myself on three days of the week. I went to cancer treatments five days a week. Right. Along with those five days of, of cancer treatment, three of those days also included my going to dialysis. Wow. And usually dialysis alone will drain you yeah. of all your energy. and. But uh, but God, yeah, Amen, Amen. Hey, but okay. God. So what all you do now, right now? Like what I know you, what you do for us. Tell everybody what you do for us. Okay, and we, well, you've been doing it for a while now. Yes, three, yes. three, three I, four years. Yes, I, I came to you guys and and got the opportunity because but I I uh, I I got c 
commissioned and certified as a community basic community chaplain. And, and you you got that certification through uh, Nathan and Cindy Timberland, right, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through uh, Chaplain International, you know, Chaplain yeah. Service, Services International, yeah. And and through them and the church Trinity, right. I was commissioned and certified yeah. to be a community chaplain. Along then, with to complete that, I needed to do some internship. Right. And you all gave me when, that opportunity. And that's when you called us. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and man, you know, up until that point, man, I was always telling people, no, we don't have anything for you to do. Mm-hmm. Because, I, you know, I don't want somebody, you know, I don't know, I just didn't feel right just handing that off to somebody. But when you said that you needed to uh, do some, do some, whatever they called it, community service or, yeah. I don't remember, or internship, internship, internship. Mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's when I thought, you know what, maybe I can get him to, to send, you know, applications for us. Yes. And, uh, I didn't know how long, I didn't know how long you were going to last and how long you were going to stick with it, but here we are, you know, yeah. you had a break, you had a little break during uh COVID because we couldn't take any more guys in. Right, and right. So you had a little break. And uh, mm-hmm. so I'm, I was thankful for that. You know, that I wasn't now, now we're working you to death though. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's, it's work, but it's, the, it's a part of it. So those of you who, uh, those of you who are uh, requesting applications, uh, from forgiven felons, they, uh, they come from this man, Steve right here. Yeah. So, uh, so when you see his handwriting, uh, is that that's who's sending it to you. And, um, so we, we want to say thank you, man. Well, uh, thank I don't, you. I probably don't honor you enough for, uh, for everything you're doing. And, uh, now that, now that you're doing it at a, at a bigger pace and a mm-hmm. bigger speed, uh, I don't know if we're gonna have to do something special for you. Well, praise God. So, um, but, uh, we, 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 we started sending so many applications out that I felt like God said, you need to buy this man a printer. <laughs> so we, we bought him a printer mm-hmm. and uh, a really nice one. And, uh, and that's, that's your printer. I mean, I think I would already told you that's your mm-hmm. printer, yeah. whether you ever, you know, even if you have to stop sending out applications, you know, that's mm-hmm. yours. We wanted to, cause we put the wear and tear on your old one. So yeah. we wanted to replace you, replace it with a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if I told you that has Wi-Fi on it. So you can, you can print from anywhere in the house. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, you know, uh, the technology end of it is good. Uh, but just give me, I, I have the basics, you know, yep. and I just want to, I want to, uh, implement the fact that not only do I get to do the, uh, the, uh, uh, clerical part, but over each name, God, Holy Spirit has given me the unction to pray. Wow. Every name. So every every name envelope that you send out has there's been prayed a over. word to connect with what Holy Spirit is doing. So I just want to give that word of hope to whoever's listening, whoever receives those applications. It's more than getting you out of there, but Holy Spirit. Spirit wants to prepare you to come out here and be who God intended for you to function in the purpose that he created you. Ooh, man, come on. You were preaching right there. Praise God. And prophesying. Amen. Uh, okay, so uh, what else do you do? Don't you do some other yes. volunteering at other places? Yes, I get to mentor uh, men that are uh, caught up in the same vice that I had of addiction. And uh, I get to mentor them. Also, myself, I'm being mentored. So you can't help nobody if you ain't being helped. That's true. And that's, true. that's, uh, that's what a vessel. That's a. Good point. That's a good it's point. important for a vessel to be able to be filled so it could pour out. And uh, so I get to do that. Uh, that's a part of my life every, every day. <laughs> and then uh, for one uh, resource center downtown Dallas, been there for years, uh, called uh, Austin Street Center. Yep. I've been uh, the um, coordinator for a for a panel coordinator for them for about going on about four years now to where I get to uh, coordinate a group of like about 12 people to bring in uh, services and encouragement to those at that homeless shelter and resource center. Okay, so people that that come there are homeless. Yes, they're home. It's a yeah, it's a homeless center. Okay, they 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 provide ultimate i mean all types of resources center and i get to uh, coordinate the uh uh for bringing services for those who are addicted okay and, and what I, services are you able to provide them or point them to or whatever well i point them to sharing my experience strength mm, and hope that's good from dealing with addiction and let them know that you know anybody that's addicted yeah can can uh lose the desire 
You know, stop using. Absolutely. Find a new way to live. Amen. And it's not religious, but it's right. all spiritual. Yeah. And absolutely. that's what I love. I love. I, I'm not a religious man, but I have a faith man that can't mm. nothing touch. Can't so nothing good. and nobody touch. And it's the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, it's above everything. Amen. So You know what? I want to give credit to this guy. I was at the Hughes unit um, uh, August 9th. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know when this episode is going to air, but I was at the Hughes unit August 9th. And uh, the first hour of the three hours I was there was a commencement graduation for mm -hmm. anger management, cognitive, life skills, and uh, recovery, smart yeah. recovery. And so each one of those, from each one of those classes, one person got to give a graduation speech. Mm -hmm. And this guy named Robert Marshall gave one, and, and, and it reminded me of kind of what you just said right there uh, because of faith. Mm -hmm. And he said that he had such a, a an addiction to ice problem mm -hmm. that he went, and he knew he was probably going to go to prison, but he went to this Christian rehab before mm -hmm. he went in. He turned himself into this Christian rehab to get some help. And the Christian person, I, uh, I'm going to butcher it. I wish I had it here in front of me, but basically... She, the, the the Christian rehab person said, said, um, you may have a substance abuse problem, but the, the, uh, the, the, the substance that you abuse the most is faith. Amen. Amen. Because she said, she told him faith is the substance mm. of things hoped hope for. for. Yes. Sir. And so she told him that you've been putting your faith and your hope in the wrong things. Mm. And so that's substance abuse. Yes, sir. And that substance abuse <laughs> opened the door for That'll all preach. those That'll other preach, substances. Man. I That'll... know. I told him, I said, man, when I got there to share, I said, man, I'm going to, I'm going to steal that because mm. I'm a forgiven felon. I'm, yeah. I steal, I'm going to steal, but I'm going to give you credit. <laughs> and so here is Robert. Yeah. I'm giving you credit for yeah. that right now. Bless you, Already Robert. using Bless it, you. man. But, uh, but you're sure you're so right. It, it, it takes faith. Yes. If you don't believe you can be sober, if you don't okay. believe you can be clean, if you don't mm. believe you can eat better, live better, think better, do mm -hmm. better. If you don't believe it mm -hmm. and you're not hoping for it, right. you don't have the faith for it. It's never going to happen. Yeah. You know, uh, Jay, I hate to interrupt you, but what I found out and I've learned to accept is the core issue of all of my problems. Why I went to substances other than the substance is that unbelief core yeah. in which that was sin. And what I did, rather, you know, I believe that I found out there's only one way to deal with sin, and that's quickly. That's good. I didn't deal with it quickly. And I've learned that now that my advocate, Jesus Christ, you know, he said, if I confess the sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So I had to learn and accept that I had a sin problem. Yeah. Because as long as I wouldn't accept that, then guess what? Sin would keep on coming and I would keep on and partaking. But once I start to deal with my sin quick, I, I don't, I'm not saying I'm sinless. Right. But because of what I believe and accept in my faith, I sin less. less. That's so good, man. Amen. That's so good. So. Uh, so literally, you know, our motto on our show is your background shouldn't hold you back. It should pay you back. Amen. And, and everything you're doing, Amen. everything you're doing in life right now, mm -hmm. your background is literally paying you back. Amen. You know, Amen. It, it may not be paying you financially, but right. it's paying you supernaturally. Mm -hmm. uh, in heaven, you're getting crowns and jewels every time Ooh. you get to share your story about how God has delivered you. Amen. And, uh, and, and increase your faith and the ability Amen. to be able to stay off all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. so you know, we haven't really talked about your background yet. Uh, but 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 we talked about you being in prison mm -hmm. and the health issues that you went while you went through while you were in prison. But let's uh man, let's go back a little bit. Now mm -hmm. let's let's dig into the background. You know, yeah. we know you're all it wasn't always this great where you're all this king this super hero volunteer at <laughs> you know, intern and, and, and volunteer at Austin Street Shelter and just blessing everybody. Associate and pastor associate pastor at your church <laughs> yeah. and and everything else, man. It wasn't always this great. No, know? no, it wasn't. So uh so let's go back and uh man, take us through briefly, maybe even childhood. What was it like growing up in the in the Steve Reese household? Uh you know, were your parents uh, together the whole time uh, when they raised you? Mm -hmm. When did you start? What kind of teen were you? Were you a troubled teen like me, or were you a, you know, a goody two shoes? And kind of walk us through some of your life. Well, Jay, you know, I I, I have to say, Jay, we were we were poor, Jay, but I didn't know it. My parents, we, I mean, we were we were not P O O R, we were P O. 
<laughs> Pope. <laughs> but God, you know, my you. parents, you know, my dad was a minister, my mom's a missionary. So we were raised in church, yeah. you know, and, and, and there's no such thing as a, a perfect household. I don't care where you were raised at. And, and, and then there were, there were times, you know, when, when we wanted to be outside and function as the other kids did, but we had to be at the church, you know, and then I build up some resentments, you know, about that. You know, that's where a religious spirit came upon me. Uh, fast forward, my, of course, eventually my parents divorced. Uh, my dad was no longer there. So that was the, 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 one of the things that, that hurt me that I couldn't acknowledge because that lacked discipline then. Cause my mom had to work more and that, that, you know, that father figure is not there, you know? Right. And, uh, so it got to a point that, you know, me being as rebellious and curious as I was. How old were you when that happened? When when that happened, I was uh, when they got divorced, I was I was 14. Mm, wow. But I... before that, let, let me go all the way back to w when I first ever decided to use a, a mind altering or controlling yeah, substance. Yeah, yeah. Jay, I was nine years old. Wow. Mm, yes. But, you know, and, and, and from that point, you know, that's what I did. That's what I used. To was that your choice or were you hanging around other guys and that, they kind of like that was that was you? a choice because I've never been one that you could pressure. Yeah. I've always really be honest with you. I was always the leader. The leader. Okay. Mm -hmm, amongst my peers. How did you get a hold of it at, at nine? At nine years old. Uh, <laughs> on Easter Sunday. My brother and one of my uncles, who's a renowned pastor now in, in Oklahoma, my brother's in heaven. Uh, we had went to my grandmother's for uh, East for Easter, big family dinner, and they let me ride back home to Dallas with them. And and uh, my brother, my uncle told my brother to get it out. And what he pulled out was a rolled up marijuana cigarette. Gotcha. And they lit it, and I said, "Man, let me have some of that." <laughs> and and they said, "No, you gonna tell mama?" I begged them, I wouldn't tell mama. <laughs> and that day, I did that. And Okay. Uh, yeah. So no, I don't want to go. Do you remember your first high? Do you remember what you felt like at that point? Yes, I was felt like uh, what we would call now a zombie. Zombie. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. stuck. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a fan of weed, man. Yeah. I, I didn't like the way it made my throat feel. I mm -hmm. didn't like the way. I mean, I wanted some uppers. You know, mm -hmm. I was a meth head. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, give me some crack. Give me some cocaine. Yeah. Give me some ice. Give me some. You know, something to get me up. I didn't want to get down because I was already an alcoholic too, yeah. and alcohol yeah. is a depressant already. So it's I didn't a drug need, too. I didn't want to do. <laughs> I didn't want to do. You know, more downers. Mm -hmm. You know, so weed was not something unless it was laced with cocaine, like a you know had a little mm -hmm. pro, yeah. like I think they called yeah. it a primo, mm -hmm. primo or something. But um, but yeah. So man, nine nine years old. Nine years and old, and that was the first time you. Mm -hmm. You did that, and uh, but so uh, what about after that, man? Did after, you... after that, uh, I started getting in trouble. Uh, the first time I went to uh, juvenile jail, uh, I was uh, 16. Uh, my cousins and I were standing on the corner getting high. I had was then called was a power hitter. <laughs> the plastic jug, jug you put a marijuana cigarette in, squeeze it, and it would give you a shotgun. And the police, we were so stoned wow. that when the police rolled up on us with the lights off, I was the only person who didn't see it. <laughs> and so I was the only person who went to juvenile. But uh, from that, man, you know, I, whatever it was that gave me some attention, right? Uh, uh, whatever yeah. it was that made me look good or sound better, you know, I did that because I had a problem with being and feeling and thinking I was inadequate. Wow, you know that's the reason. Self acceptance. I, that's the yeah. first, the the first time I ever tasted alcohol was for that same reason. Yeah, I only did it because there was a crowd in front of me. Mm -hmm. I was trying to win their their friendship because exactly. we it was a new place, a new church, a new school, mm -hmm. and I was trying to be, I was trying to get them to accept me. Mm -hmm. And so when I drank that nasty beer, mm -hmm. yeah, I wasn't drinking beer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't drinking Coors Light. I was drinking acceptance. Acceptance, exactly. And uh, and so yeah, I get that. I feel mm -hmm. that. So eventually, you know, I went through the normal things, even some 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 moments of stability. Uh, I was always a good student academically. Uh, I played sports, but then my attitude was too, uh, man, look here, you know, you you know, coach, you can holler at me, but after a while, I ain't from the head. Yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, I got you... kicked off the team because we had a, a skirmish at the, at the school, and I was right there in the middle of it. 
I ain't never seen you angry. So I, no, I can't, you haven't. I can't, um, yes. I can't imagine mm-hmm. uh, seeing you angry at a coach. If any man be in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but don't get fooled. Don't get oh, it twisted. Oh, man. Yeah, I have yeah. moments. Because you got this smile, you know. Well, yeah, Big old Steve, brother Steve, smile, and I can't imagine it's the you. Joy of the Lord, angry. brother. You know when I even when I don't feel it, I can. You know, you know, he go. gives it to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so anyway, man. But eventually, man, uh, I, I slowed down, and I, uh, that was a calling my on my life. I knew that when I was turned thirteen, and I ran from it because I didn't. I wanted to be anything but a preacher, like my daddy. And the very thing I ran from, the very things I didn't want to do, that's what happened. And so uh, I got married, uh, had one child, and one Sunday, I'll never forget, my home church stand, the pastor was preaching from Romans 12, 1 and 2. And he went and, and elaborated back to Paul's conversion in Acts 9, and and Holy Spirit just overwhelmed me. I couldn't stop Ooh. crying. I couldn't, my my wife was sitting there looking upside my head on the pew and like, baby, you all right? <laughs> and after church, I told her what was, so I said, baby, God wants me to preach the gospel. And I didn't want to do it. You know, I didn't want to do it. So when I got out of church, I went, we went to my mom's house for dinner and I told my mom, she said, you need to talk to your pastor. And I talked to my pastor. And from that point on, you know, uh, he said, okay, well, we're going to announce your calling and we're going to present you before the congregation and give you a Now, where, where was this? What church? What at city? At Griggs Chapel in Dallas, Texas. Griggs Chapel, Dallas, Under Texas. the doctor, uh, the late Dr. Homer Delaney Webb, great mm-hmm. man of God. And I started preaching and this was right after I went, mind you, I had went back to college 10 years out of high school with a wife and a child, and uh, I thought I didn't want no more education, but I went back to school, and I got a degree in electronic engineering technology. Are you serious? Yes, yes. I got a I got a story in a book I want to work on. That oh you know, my goodness! It, yes, you're right. I don't know you. <laughs> I, I told you, you didn't <laughs> I've know known me. you for four years, but I don't know you. Yeah. I don't know you. I'm yeah. so excited to learn all this stuff. Yes, I mean and, we've been friends, but I, yeah. you know, I, whenever I was uh, asking Steve, you know, to, whenever I was asking Steve to come on the show, I was like, you know, I don't even know your your crime. I don't know what you went to prison for. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about your life before prison, during mm-hmm. prison, and uh, and so I said, man, we need to. I need to do this interview just so I can get to know you. Yeah, I know because I know I know you have a powerful story. Praise God. Because. Because I could tell God brought you out of some stuff yes. because of how you live life now. Mm-hmm. He who's been forgiven much loves it much. Loves much. And, and you forgive. love everybody and you love much. And yeah. so I knew that God had to had had to have brought you out of something. Yes. Uh, some dark places yes, in your right. life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to hear all this now and to hear that you were even preaching. Yes, that you were before. even preaching. Yeah. See, see, yeah. see, see. see, see. Peter ain't the only one that, that was a preacher and a backslider. <laughs> and I know it's some more of us out there. So to that brother that's a man of God, you know you're a man oh, of God. Come on, talk to the camera. Tell to, that, to that brother out there that's a man of God, you you were not, you were not, uh, you didn't just went, but you were sent. Come on. Amen. God sent you. He preordained, predestined your life to be a voice, an oracle for him. To call those, compel men and women to be saved. You may have fallen, you know, because the enemy comes to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said he has prayed for us. And the Bible tells me that after I've been converted, I need to go back and strengthen my brothers. Be encouraged. Don't let the devil win. The decision is yours. Get up. Confess up. Look up. And speak up. Come on. For the kingdom of God. Come on, amen. man, and brother so, Steve. Amen, so. man. I lo- I need to come here. You preach. Well, praise God. I mean, I just did. I just yeah, did. Well, but I mean, I need to. Yeah. We need to. We need to forgive them fellas to come up and hear you preach. Next time you're preaching, you let us know. That's uh, on the third Sunday. Next Sunday, not this coming Sunday, but the next next Sunday. We'll, okay. We'll invite you guys to come out. That's going to be the twentieth. Yes. All right. Okay. I think we're going to be there to watch you, man. Well, praise God. I would love to see my brothers. Okay. Amen. So 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 how close to your prison? Your prison, going into prison, was all this preaching and stuff. Like, how far into the future? Did I you- okay. Uh, I, then I went through a divorce, 
I'm I'm I'm, I'm picking up moments that right that that was a part of that transition, and uh, I went through a divorce because you know the enemy come when at first he might be just using a a, a, a cannon come on when yeah. you come on God's side, but once you make a decision, see, cause it's decisions that change, you know, yep. change things. Uh, he went and got a howitzer. Mm. Wow. And he shot me right where mm-hmm. it means the most with, with my marriage. Yeah. And I couldn't handle it, bro. Mm. I couldn't. I well, I couldn't, but I also didn't go to the rock of Jesus. Yeah. I went to the rock of cocaine. Oh, man. To deal with life on life terms. That's what I did for a coping mechanism. And, and cocaine addiction wouldn't let me be a husband. In an attic, it wouldn't let me be a father in an attic. It wouldn't let me be a man of God in an attic. It wouldn't let me be the engineering tech in an attic. Mm. It wanted to be my number one. I'm be honest with you. It even became my God because mm. I chose it over yeah. God, yeah. idolatry, and I suffered for that. I suffered for man that. years of battling addiction, but God gave me some strength to keep on trying, keep on yeah. trying. And so, and fast fast forward to 2008, I, uh, in my addiction, I I was sitting in a friend's apartment because I had lost my apartment. <laughs> okay. And this particular night, I lost my apartment. And, uh, and so, but I had everything that I needed. And this is where we have that problem of, of focusing on what we want. Mm-hmm. putting the want before the need yep. to find contentment. And I had everything I needed, but I wanted more. I'm mm-hmm. a moreaholic. Yeah. And uh, that particular night I left the house. I had just finished reading the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that religious spirit I was under. I had just finished reading the Bible and I went up the street to some apartments where I was hanging out with a, with a brother-in-law of mine. And, uh, a guy came there. He was having a, a issue with a, a young lady over some drugs. And and my brother-in-law asked me to answer the door. I answered the door, and I said, they don't want you to come in. The guy attacked me. So I shut the door, shut him out. And when I came out of the apartment, the guy attacked me again, and he was swinging a mat to hit me with it. Mm. And I was asking him to leave me alone, and before I knew it, my my street in, instincts right. is to protect myself yep. and in the process of that he lost his life mm. and because of my actions right and uh i went to i went to jail and i was what was your sentence uh my sentence was 17 years 17 years okay uh, f- for manslaughter and i was angry with god because of what i did Mm. Yeah. Mind me of yeah. somebody, Adam, huh? Mm-hmm. Angry with and blaming God. And I told God then, I said, I ain't preaching no more. I ain't teaching. I ain't singing. I ain't doing nothing with you, God. And I went to prison. Now, because, you know, your charge was manslaughter, but mm-hmm. they were trying to get you they for char- murder. They charged me with murder. They charged you with murder. And so you knew it wasn't murder. You right. were in self defense. Right. And so, and, and, and eventually that's, you know, that's how they had to rule because mm-hmm. if there's no intent there, you were right. intended just to, to protect yes. yourself. And that's right. the reason that came out and right. God allowed that to come out. Yes. He could have allowed it to, to be murder. To, to be murder. Mm-hmm. And uh, who knows how much longer you would have done on that yeah. one. Uh, manslaughter. Did they have, would they make it ag? Aggravated? Uh, non-ag. Okay. Non-ag. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, you were mad at God. I was mad at God because... I wanted to blame somebody. I still didn't want to accept responsibility. You know, that's a main problem we, we have in society. As a man, I know. Well, now I'm a man. Then I was just a male. See, males are born. Men are made. And men, we become men when we accept God's uh, God, our position God has called us to and the responsibilities for it. Mm. Good or bad. Good I or need bad. to accept the responsibility of my actions. And uh, so when I first went through my first few uh, transfer units, Jay, every one I went to, except for the ones where I was dormed, I was always in a cell by myself. Mm. Guys were asking me, man, say old school, you must, because I went to prison at 46 years old. So that's really old school yeah, when you're yeah, locked down. Yeah. 
And they were saying, school, you must be under PC, protective custody. And I tell them, son, just uh, check my track, check my travel card. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. And uh, but anyway, you know, now I know that God was using that time for, to get my attention. Yeah. You know, that commercial with uh, back. Uh, I think it was Verizon where the man will be walking and he say, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you yeah. hear me now? Yep. Can you so hear me God now? asked me the question. Can you hear me now? I love it. Yeah. And uh, so eventually I got to a my first ID unit was just Smith unit. And uh, every Saturday I would clean my cell, you know, and listen to some some music and stuff. And I get in there and I get to sing in secular music, you know, doing my thing, I thought. And uh, a guy heard me. And he said, man, say school, you ought to come down here and sing in our choir. And I said, man, I don't do nothing with that. But one particular yeah, day. Yeah, because you'd already told God you ain't going to preach. Yeah, you ain't going to sing. Anymore. I ain't yeah. going to do none of that. Yeah. And one particular night through the week, man, I reached over. I kept my Bible because that's where I had phone numbers, commissary slips, come on. and I 60s. Oh, the important stuff. Yes, the <laughs> real important stuff. And, uh, and uh, one particular night, I just opened the Bible, Holy Spirit. I didn't want to acknowledge him, but he said, wherever you open that book, I want you to read. I opened the book to St. John 13, 17. And this verse says, now Jesus speaking to his disciples, particularly Peter. He says, now that you know these things, mm -hmm. blessed are mm -hmm. you if you do them. Wow. You know, he's if, washing their feet. If you if, do them. Uh-huh. Now, you know, see. I've been knowing the whole time. But yeah. I thought I knew. Yeah, yeah. But he says, now that you know these things, bless you. And uh, it pricked my heart, bro. Yeah. It pricked my heart because, you know, Peter said, Lord, you can't wash my feet. He said, well, if I can't wash your feet, you'll have nothing to do with me. And he recanted and said, well, Lord, wash not just my feet, my head, my, my hand. Whole body, yes, yeah. everything. And uh, that, was a, that was a lesson of on humility, the principle. Yeah of humility, which is so essential in the kingdom of God that uh, I need to uh, focus and practice on humility, Yeah, not exalting myself. So did you go sing? Yes, I did. You did? Yes. Eventually I joined the choir and I started having, God sent me to the book of uh, Proverbs. Okay. And I started sitting in the day room, just studying by myself. And guys would come by and say, man, what you studying? What you? And I start sharing with them whatever I was on. Because I went to Proverbs from 1 all the way to 31, you know, and uh, chapter 1 to 31. And and for you know it, you know, guys would come and when they ever they see me, they would come out there and join me. And we started having a Bible study. Wow. And every Wednesday we had a Bible study fellowship where we did a spread. We studied. Then we did a spread. Come on, what kind of spread would you do, man? Tell, tell us what kind of spread, man. Well, I made what kind of spread would you like, man? Because you know everybody has. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Snowman wanted to really get on my lap. So sorry, y'all. You yeah, have to deal yeah. with uh, Snowman. Mm. But tell everybody, man, what kind of spreads well, would you? Well, were you the cook? Or were you just cook? Yes, I'm you the, the cook. cook. You were the cook. All I'm right, good. I had to, I prepared the word in the food. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, we, us, so tell us what kind of we, spread you. I made. made the spread of. I made some bad enchiladas, man. Enchiladas, and sometimes I made gumbo. Okay, now tell people that aren't. Hey, Snowman, get down. Tell people that uh, aren't in prison and that have never been to prison. Mm -hmm. um, what 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 does prison enchiladas consist of? Prison enchiladas consist of you taking some uh, tortilla chips and uh, uh, not tortilla chips, tortillas, the the tortillas, right. and you take uh, uh, you can from commissary you could get a. Uh, uh, seasoned ground beef mm -hmm. and you get some jalapeno peppers and you slice them up and uh and you put some cheese spread in there mm. you're making me hungry uh -huh. right now bro and then you get some refried beans oh, that you on. get yeah. and you put all of that in there and you roll it up and you put it in a chip bag and you know i can say this now my hot pot was a boiler. Was it a modified? Yo, it modified, was modified. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my hot pot was a boiler. So you put that in. Did you there. do it yourself, or you had somebody else? No, do it? I had somebody. I paid okay. somebody right, to do go. it. There you, go. you know, and uh, so I use put that in a, in a chip bag, tighten it up, put it in the bag with some water in the hot pot, 
and uh, you cook that, and then after it come out, man, you spread a little mm. more cheese on it, mm. and you got yourself some mm. enchilada mm. working All right. it. All right. And then then also a gumbo. But anyhow. Yes, <laughs> gumbo. Yes, the gumbo right, too. Yeah. Man, but wow. y'all, you know, get at me and I, I might share some of my, go, my recipe. But anyway. So God's doing a work in your life now. You're yes. back in church. You're back around the yes. fellowship of the believers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're growing in the Lord. And yes. so. Uh, serving. Yeah. Because he said greater. The greatest yeah. of us would be a servant. And I'm not trying to be great. Yeah. I just want the kingdom to be great. Right. Absolutely. And, and in order for that to happen, I have to serve. Yeah. I choose and I want to serve. So now did you know, uh, you know, what, what were your thoughts when you came up for parole the first year? Did you think you weren't going to make it or were you bl believing God I for it? I was very or? optimistic, Jay. And, you know, and mind you, uh, I served 10 and a half years. But in my case being non-ag. Every year. Wait, you served 10 and a half on yes, a 17? On a 17. And it wasn't ag. So it you, wasn't So ag. you did more than half. Yes. Okay. Every year, Jay. Oh, man. I seen parole. And mind you, every year I was meeting everything I could meet all the requirements. Every unit I was at, I got to serve under the chaplain. You know, I was associated with the chaplaincy and, and, and the Christian movement in that particular unit. That's what my nickname was Brother Reese. Yeah. And uh, some guys would make fun of me come up, yes, T.D. Fakes, not T.D. Jakes. <laughs> T.D. Fakes? That's so funny. <laughs> guys are so, guys yeah. are so. But that's prison life. Yeah. You got to learn yeah. to laugh, man. Yeah. You got to yeah. learn to laugh. So true. Yeah, but uh, anyway, man, uh, uh, even through that, man. Was there ever a year that you just got like, like it got to you, like, yes. like man, come on, yes, God, man. what's going my, on? My folks even hired an attorney, you know, and everything. And that was about the, uh, what, around about the sixth year. They hired an attorney? Uh-huh, and I said, well, okay, God, you know, I'm going to stay on the course, and I just believe you to let me out. And he said, yeah, I'm going to let you out, but I'm going to decide when. <laughs> God, you ain't right, you ain't right. But anyway, man, uh Every year, man, and then it got so, so trying on me, bro, that I just made a decision, said, God, okay, it's when you say so, but I got to keep doing what I'm supposed to do. Right. Occupy till I come, yes. you know, and just, just keep washing the feet, keep mm -hmm. serving, keep yes. doing it, keep grinding, mm -hmm. uh, do not become weary in well-doing. Exactly. Or in due season. Due season, I will reap Ooh. if I faint not. And that due, that due mm. is his due. Yes. His due season. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I would get I would get bewildered, Jay, because I would see guys that's doing a little bit of everything. Oh, man. And they getting parole. I know how that feels. Boy, oh, look at here, looking at the wicked, you know. Yeah. But, you know, most of them guys probably back in or gone. Yeah, you know, and I hope they ain't, but you know yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. But uh, we we gotta remain faithful, and so. But I would I, see. I was in there for five DWIs, mm -hmm. and I would see guys on. Uh, you know, they were letting murder cases. They were letting you know aggravated assault with deadly weapon cases go on. I was in there for DWI, and I was yeah. just like, man, God. But I prayed a prayer. Yeah, when I was in ADSEG, I prayed a prayer. And and I said, God, don't let me out of prison until you know I'm ready yeah. to never come back. And that's a dangerous prayer to pray, uh, because you know we we all we ready. Yeah. Uh, every time I go into prison, I'm like, who's ready to go home? Every hand goes Hell up. Yeah. Who mm -hmm. thinks God thinks you're ready to go home? But like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know what God thinks if He thinks I'm ready to go home or not. But uh, you know, but uh, but yeah, that's it's um, uh, so so when did you really think you know? Well, I mean, you did ten and a half years. Yeah, well, Jay, and two. I'm gonna tell you, 2016, my mom got pretty sick, you know. And my year, the whole time I was incarcerated, man, I had a total of what three visits. Wow. When I was at Ellis, my oldest sister came to visit me once. Man. When I was, when I finally got to my last unit, which was just the three. Hey, brothers. Uh, um, my ex-wife visited me twice. The first time she came by herself, second time she came with my two daughters because they hadn't seen me. And that was the 10th year that my f daughters finally, you know, had enough yeah. uh, compassion and grace right. to come see me. That's good. Yeah, and, uh, but mind you, man, 2016, my mom died. And it was the weekend of Mother's Day. Mm. And at the chapel, every year what we did for Mother's Day weekend was, we did a special 
dinner and, and program for the mothers. And uh, this one mother had asked me to sing a song called Mother uh, Mama by yeah. Boys to Men. Now, mind you, I knew my mom was sick, but I didn't expect her to go. And that Friday night, you know, we'd rehearsed for the songs and everything. Uh, got to chapel, fixed up to do the dinners. And I got a call to the lieutenant's office. And something come over me. And, you know, that was a very somber but trying moment for me because when I was walking up the hall, I just felt that. Yeah. And when I came in there, they told me uh, my sister had called and said my mama had died. Mm. So, and then I went to the dorm and uh, the chaplain, he came in. Right. You know, he had been home, but he came in and he came and sat down and he and he talked to me. And he, he said, Reese, you know, he said, I'm so sorry for your loss and everything. He said, now, if you don't want to be a part of the mm. Mother's Day Thing yeah, you, we all understand. I said, I said, chap, we called him chap. I said, yeah. chap, my mother wouldn't have it no other way. It's mm. the only way I could honor yeah. her and yeah, honor, yeah, yeah. The, honor the mothers and, and encourage the guys that still have their mother. And uh, it was hard, but God allowed me. He gave me the strength to do mm. it. Do you remember the song? Yes. You want to sing a little bit of it? Oh, right now, Mama. Oh, the, anybody knows it. I, I Right now, I don't. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to think. Right, nah, okay, not, not right. today. Not today. It's, it's you know. It's well, a little... I think. I think. I think somebody. I think somebody should hear your voice though. So, do you have a song that you could sing for us? Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I'll never know just how Christ, he came to love old Steve so. Mm -hmm. But he looked beyond all, all of my fault and he saw my need. Wow. Yeah. And That's he, so good. He you ain't never a, stopped doing it. You got a beautiful voice, bro. Well, praise thank God. You every, for, thank you for doing that for us. Everything man. I have that's good. So came fast from God. So fast forward to when you when you finally uh got that Got that answer you wanted, man. Well, okay, then that's 2016. My mom died. 2017. I have I had one brother, and we were very close. 2017, my brother died. Mm. Mm, yeah. Uh, at this time, were you uh, fighting, getting mad at God? I mean, well, uh, no, I wasn't upset, angry with God. Or... I was just I had to find a place of gratitude, Jaden. That's so good because man, there's so many people in prison all over the nation right now that are that have gone through this, that are going through this. I get letters that people just lost people this past week. Yes, and so uh, some people that are saved and some people that are not saved, right. and sometimes they're both blaming God. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're they don't understand. Nobody understands why. Yeah. So man, talk about talk about what how you handled it, mm -hmm. and you know maybe some things you did right, some things mm -hmm. you did wrong. I know yeah. you said you kept an attitude of gratitude. I know that's important. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about that so we can help these well, help, help everybody. Well, else. brothers, I I, I want to say and sisters, and sisters, and sisters yeah. brothers and sisters that that first of all we got to be real with what life is. Yeah, pain is pain whether you saved or whether you're unsaved. Because we have to address our humanity. Don't get religious on this thing, you know. And even though I was getting to be a part of what God wanted to do in the earth while I was in prison, I still heard it. Yeah. I still went through the process of anger and the process of denial. But I had to choose to find gratitude mm. in that situation because that's the only way I would get strength and guidance and allow Holy Spirit, who is paracletus, meaning he's right there Come, at my side. Yeah. 
He was right there alongside of me. And God knew, I believe God knew that if I were out in the free world at that time, I might not have chose that. Mm. So uh, Paul says in all things, not for all things, but in all things, we ought to give thanks. That's good. So I needed to choose to find gratitude. So, and, and it is a choice. Yes. We do have a choice. In everything, Every we have a choice. Yes, yes. And and sometimes we, the choice we made sometimes ended up it's in prison. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Led us to prison. Mm-hmm. And the choices I make now keep me out of prison. Amen. <laughs> the choices I make keep me uh, keep me on the right track with God. The choices Amen. I make can 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 get me off track. Yeah. And uh, but but I like the way you said it. You 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 chose. Mm-hmm. You chose. And even in the darkest moments right. of our lives, we still have a choice. choice. And that's God's gift of free will to Amen. us. Amen. Okay. Because if if He didn't give us free will, then in those choices, we would just we wouldn't have a choice, and we would go to that drug, or we would go to that whatever, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be a choice anymore. Right. We'd be robots. Amen. But He gave us a free will, so there's always a choice. Yes. And uh, and I like that because you know choosing gratitude during a moment of loss that's a hard thing to do, Steve. Mm-hmm. That's a hard yeah, thing to do. Hard. I mean, whenever me and Jessamy, you know, we we already went through two stillborns, mm. and then our third baby goes twenty weeks. We have a gender reveal party planned. We're at the midwife. They're doing the sonogram. The midwife is one of our good friends. Mm-hmm. She's doing a sonogram, and she can't find the heartbeat. 20 weeks, Mm -hmm. 20 weeks after losing two babies already. Mm -hmm. And, and, and she just, Amy just hugs my wife and I have to admit, man, I got, I got upset at God for a minute, for a minute. But the first thing I did was I chose to call one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. And when you choose in those moments, when Mm -hmm. you choose to call a mentor, because Mm -hmm. your state, Mm -hmm. my state of being, my state of mind at that moment Mm -hmm. was, was not good. Mm -hmm. So I I called my mentor and and, and he happened to be a pastor. He wasn't the the senior pastor, but he happened to be a pastor and said, man, just go take her, take her. uh, I'll handle the party. I'll handle calling everybody, take her and y'all go grieve together. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, you know, I was like, okay, God, are we ever going to have kids here on earth? Right. We got three in heaven, but are mm. we ever going to have kids on earth? And I wanted to know why, Brother Steve. Mm. I wanted to know why. Some, and it's okay for everybody out there listening that is going through a dark time, loss, whatever. It's okay to ask why. Mm-hmm. It's okay to even doubt. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thomas doubted. Yes. And he was he was one of Jesus' 12. That's right. And Jesus knew that. Mm-hmm. And Jesus knew how to approach Thomas and knew how to... To, to, to be relationship, have a relationship with Thomas. Mm-hmm. And so it's okay to question. It's okay to want to know why, but you can't let that part consume you that yeah. you're unable to choose right. gratitude choose. in those moments. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, because the gratitude that we chose during those moments was, man, we still got each other. Amen. We still got God. He's still mm-hmm. on the throne. We don't know why this happened, and but we found out. You know, yeah. God never forgot that I wanted to know why. Mm-hmm. And a year later, we had, you know, a year later, we had Jessa Lynn. Yes. And then two months later, I'm in the wind unit, and I got to minister to a guard who, mm-hmm. him and his wife, had already had two miscarriages. See. And they were wondering if they were ever going to have kids on earth. Predestined. And the Holy Spirit said, here's why. Mm. Here's why. Predestined. I didn't know why. Point. I didn't know why at first, but yes. I eventually got to find out the why. Because if, if I hadn't gone through what we went through, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have known how to, to, uh, minister. to encourage that guy. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know, and so, uh, and and I think that's the reason background check podcasts exist, mm-hmm. so that we can let people know out there that are going through it. Amen. Hey, we've been through it too. Amen. And if he brought us through it, he can Come bring on. you through it. We so. overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You know, Jay. Uh, back to my my coming home. Uh, I uh, after my brother died in 2017. You know. Uh, by this time, they had uh, assigned me to uh, as an inmate facilitator of a of a movement called Trans Journey to Transformation. Okay, some of you guys may be familiar with it, and uh, 
So I what was. What unit were you on at that I time? I was at, still at Jester still 3. Jester 3. My right. last five and a half years were done at the Jester 3 say, unit. Say hi to the Jester 3 Jester guys. 3 brothers, man. I love you guys, man. And uh, Yance and I are still working on a, a opportunity, man, to come in and see you brothers, man, and minister to you guys. Let y'all minister to us. Yes. Remembering you guys in my prayers, do so for me and all the brothers that are still there and support one another, encourage one another, man, because we need it. We all need it. Man. Say so, uh, but uh, that 2018 hit, and uh, it was June. It was the month of May, and uh, time for me to see parole again. And uh, that that Wednesday, I got a lay in. Said, uh, "Go see uh, uh, what is that? When you getting ready to go see parole? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the lay in, the lay in, the lay in. Yeah, uh-huh, the lay-in. The com- yeah, yeah the, to see see uh my uh, IPO, the IPO. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So anyway, uh, that Thursday morning, I finished doing uh, journey transformation. Went and had my lunch, getting ready to go to the dorm, put my books up and everything. And they said, "Brother Reese, you ain't gonna go to the yellow, your lay in because once you get a lay in for 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 something like that, everybody peep yep. and see oh, it." Oh yeah. And I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna go," but I wasn't enthused about it because I just felt like I felt like not in my spirit. Come on. I felt like it was going to be set off. Uh, mind you, I done had nine in a row. Yeah. <laughs> so it ain't easy to get excited about that. And uh, so I went in there, and the lady, Miss Green, I'll never forget, she said, Reese, she said, come on in and have a seat. I said, no, just give me my give me my paper. Let me go. You know, because I ain't got them uh you had your mind. DM, you had DMS. Your, you had your mind made up. Huh? Yeah, my, I got to take this with some. You know, I got to be. I be. I got to be courageous. Time. Don't waste my yeah. time. Just give. Just give me the I answer. I got nine DMSs denied mandatory supervision. She said, "Well, okay, then. Well, I just want you to know that you got an RMS." I said, "What?" She said, "Yeah, you got a release." For mandatory supervision, boy, look here, I got my shot on. <laughs> I got my shot on right dance, there. You, you they didn't do see me shot in the chapel, but I shot it right then in the office. She was just grinning. Oh. She said, okay, okay, Reese. She said, now sit down. <laughs> this was May 26th. I mean, May 25th that day. It was May 25th. And she said, now have a seat. Now let me tell you what your release date is. May 25th now. She said, uh, your release date is June 1st. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Six days, man. Six days. I ain't all my ten and a half years. I ain't never seen nobody get an answer and be gone in six days. No. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 what is it when they give you uh, in your times? Uh, uh, release of one year, one month or. Uh, uh, Oh yeah, the uh, the FI one. Yeah, FI, FI, FI one. So now, so, not even my FI one. Do you get that? So, so the way the way they explained it to me was if if you get if you're not if you don't go past your projected release date, which which is your short way. Mm-hmm. If you don't go past that, then whatever answer you get is called parole, and you'll get an FI or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you end up going past that short way date, mm-hmm. now it's not it's not parole anymore. It's called mandatory supervision, mm-hmm. and you're either going to get a DMS or, or an RMS. RMS. Right. So at that point, they did the same thing to me. They took my short way away. Yeah, they took they mine did, too. They, they did the same thing, and so so when they called me down there to give it back to me, mm-hmm. they said you got an RMS now, mm-hmm. and mine was mine was mine was I think ten or twelve days. See. So so it's still when you so when you get a. When you get a RMS, mm-hmm. then that's better than an FI. FI, <laughs> yeah. Say when I'm walking back up the hall, everybody saying they know where I'd been. They said, "Brother Reese, brother Reese." Everybody, went, what you get? You get an FI one? I said, "No, I got a FI Jesus." <laughs> <laughs> so it, man, that, that's funny. That's man, awesome. And and and, and, and it's s- cool. I, I like it better when you get the the quick RMSs because yeah. then. You know, if you get an FI one, you're there for another 30, 45 yeah, days they, or whatever. Uh, and if you get an FI two, if if so, when you tell people the the answer, then everybody starts going, "Oh, well, can I get that shirt? Yeah, hey, can I get what that? You <laughs> <laughs> so what you gonna do with that hot pot, bro? So what you gonna do with that radio? I liked it whenever it was when it was quicker. Yeah, so then yeah. that way you didn't really have a lot of time. Yeah, to, you know. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, man, on June first, man, my my oldest sister, and my ex wife, were at the gate at the walls, and I came home. And the next stage of the journey began. Man. Yes. That's man. awesome. 
Yes. Yeah, That's so. awesome. And then since you've been out, you know, we we just we got we we already know yeah what you've been doing since you've been out. Yes. But man, your uh your story, uh, even knowing now the full full story, mm-hmm. I'm even I'm even more blessed now than than ever before. Well, praise and God. Uh, and just you know to now to know what you've been through mm. physically, amen, emotionally, mm-hmm. and spiritually, oh, man, <laughs> all of it, mm-hmm. all of it. Because man, um, l- let me ask you this: when, sure. when did you start experiencing a lot of the health problems? What year? Uh, you mean prior to co- incarceration? Uh, during uh, during incarceration. And during incarceration, yeah. um, I would say uh, I got locked up two thousand eight. It started really weighing on me physically because when I first they first locked me up, they had me on psych meds. Okay, how but, come? Huh? <laughs> I was crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> ain't no joke either. Look where I was, what I had oh, been doing. Man. But uh, that was the insanity of my disease, you know. Okay, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, but uh, it was I would say in two thousand eleven. That's when it started okay. really weighing on me. Because when I first got like, I was working out and everything, going in the morning, yeah. and lifting weights and walking. I ain't doing much of running, but you know, I was feeling good. Now, how did you handle how How did you handle the heat in Texas in the summer? Well, what I did was uh, I kept a lot of uh, I kept a lot of water. I bought bottled water and stuff like that. Uh, I had two fans. They 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 became gr- gracious to us. Those people that had uh, health issues like myself. They would allow us to have two fans. Mm. I purchased another fan. I had two fans and stuff like that. During the day, I tried to stay in the chapel, uh, hipping, hipping, <laughs> hipping the chaplain and hipping inmates so I could stay in the AC. And then at night, you know, when I leave there, uh, go take a shower and get to my dorm. And Now tell people how, tell people, because a lot of people out here think, you know, well, you do you do the crime, then you deserve whatever you get inside prison. Mm. But a lot of people don't realize how hot it gets in, inside it's, prison. It's severely hot. It's dangerously hot. Yeah. I read an article the other day where they said they were providing ice and and fans for inmates. Uh, that's better than what we were getting right. at that time. You know, it, it, they would they would. Prevent and right now, give you a fan, but you had to. I mean, you had to go through so much bureaucracy yeah. to get a. Fan. If you right. didn't, if you didn't have money on your books, you yeah. had to go through so much bureaucracy yep. to get a fan. And so. even now, uh, you know, they're supposed to be providing water and stuff, um, mm. but uh, they're so they're so short staffed yeah. that they're not even being able to do that. Provide it, and so you know they're they're saying that they provide it mm-hmm. because they they are when when they have staff, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, but man, you know, now, uh, the Lane Murray unit, it's a female unit after mm-hmm. we had the, uh, 85 to stay alive rally mm-hmm. down there just a few weeks ago. I went mm-hmm. to that, um, you know, there were, there were two women on the Lane Murray unit that, that died before me and Jessamy and Michael Pugh went in there yeah. just, just re- right before that we went in there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, in, in, in June alone, there was 52 inmates in Texas that died. Yeah. Uh, now, that. now, none of them were heat related. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I bet you a lot of them were heat related. Uh, and so, uh, but yeah, they they went and they put some temporary cooling mm-hmm. in I think one or two dorms uh, in the Murray, which is fine, but it's not near enough no. for that unit and for anywhere else around Texas. Um, there, there's a there's there's a difference between you know uh, if you're trying to punish somebody to a path of correction and rehabilitation. Or are you it, trying to kill them? Or you, yeah. Or are you trying to give somebody who's in there for yeah, drugs yeah. a life sentence because right. he, you know, a 35 year old kid that died yeah. out there. You know I mean? It's just like, uh, so I, I, and I don't know that our government really wants to do much about it. Yeah. I don't know that, you know, Europe and other third world countries that not third world, but other mm. developed countries like Europe, they do prison way different. Yes, and it's so it's amazing, incredible. It's 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 educational. It's rehabilitative. Mm-hmm. It's even for the most hardened criminals. Well, some some people ain't not gonna like what I'm about to say, and I don't regret what I'm saying because I mean it from my heart. But I know from experience and what I read and see out here, as well as being inside here in the United States, when we got more prisons than anywhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the state of Texas has more than any yep. in the nation. And prison is a business. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. It it's a part. It's a it's a liaison for the judicial system, and they use it. And I'll say this as a part of institutionalized slavery. Yeah. They it's get true. free. They get free labor. Yep. And they're on. They're on the market. Correct. Yep. They're on the market. Stock market. And they're making money from free labor. Who yep. can't stay rich from that? Yeah. I know. They're, they're so, never broke. They're never, they broke. never they, broke. They always they they say sometimes they don't have money to put air conditioning yes, in yes. or whatever, but they're, but they're but, they're, they're not. But broke. then I'll broke. say this: then for the inmate that's in still there, uh, there is a way to do things. Yeah, you know, and and you know you may get a little flack from even inmates, but a grievance. Yeah, use the grievance system, man. Yeah. Don't just take it laying down. You can't just dog me without me saying right. Do yeah. something do, do, and follow, yeah. follow the protocols. Whatever, right, that's whatever right. That's what I'm saying. Whatever protocols they have in place, follow them. Follow and, the protocols. Uh, and just keep writing grievances. Yeah, and, and 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 let your conduct determine who you are. Exactly. I'm sitting there. sorry, y'all was rubbing my eyes, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Oh man, Steve. Uh, well, you got anything else to talk about? Other than, man, I just thank God that I am not what I did. Mm. Today I am what I do. Amen. Amen. You know, today I Say that get, again. Say that again. I am not what I did. Today I am what I do. And that's because of the grace and mercy of God. Giving me what I don't deserve and holding back that which I do deserve. Just because I'm free doesn't mean I don't still need that grace and mercy to cover me. Amen. And amen. I speak that over you, my brothers and sisters. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, that your Holy Spirit is right there, ruling, protecting, and preserving as only you can do. Lord God, we want to trust lawyers. We want to trust finances, God. But I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to the heart of that brother or that sister and let them know only you, God, Holy Spirit is moving. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is moving right now. And he holds the key. Father God, you said, and he that began a good work shall yes. perfect it, shall complete it, even into the day of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you yes. and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, man, you just did what I was going to have you do. I was going to have you speak something over the inmates uh, that are listening behind bars well, on, on Pando. Uh, we're we're not just audio anymore. You're the <laughs> second. You're the second interview. Uh, you're the second interview. I'm still getting used to all the cameras. Mm-hmm. You're the second interview that we've done here in the studio, Amen. video, Amen. Uh, and it's going to be on YouTube. So for everybody not in prison that, mm-hmm. that doesn't watch the Pando app, but if you're not in prison, uh, you want to watch our video interviews, uh, just go to YouTube, uh, the channel Forgiven Felons, and you can you can watch us there. If you're just into audio, it's going to also, this is also going to be on the audio oh, platform, God. Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. So uh, whatever you listen to, whatever platform you listen to podcasts on, this will be on audio and YouTube. And on the inside, it'll be on audio and Pando. So, uh, Steve, who is your uh, favorite football team? Certainly the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I was privileged in 1972 to become a Dallas Cowboy fan where I had the privilege to walk to my first game at the Cotton Bowl because I lived four blocks away. So uh, my heart goes out to those that are less fortunate, such as uh, Pittsburgh fans, and so, so you're forth. not so you're not completely saved because uh, you're cause saved you're still all cow- the way. You're still a Cowboys Feel fan. with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> <laughs> burning with fire. Amen. He <laughs> still got some. Sounds like you still got some strongholds and demons inside you. The we da- bi- we bind the devil right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dallas and demons. You know, start, nah, nah. starts with the same no correlation, <laughs> no correlation. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Hey, uh, we'll end with end with joy. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Strength, Amen. And uh, the the devil. I was telling this to the the. I went to the Hughes unit uh, mm-hmm. August 9th, and I was telling the guys that. The devil's biggest uh, tactic is to try to steal our joy. Amen. Because we, if he can steal our joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength, strength yeah. then he can make us weak. Yes. And so uh, just give something. I don't care if it's a joke. I don't care if it's a spiritual, joyful, but give him something, man, that kind of, David even said, restore the joy of my salvation. And so speak joy over over everybody out there right now. 
Amen, Lord. The word of God says that uh, count it all joy. And he didn't say if, he said when ye fall into diverse temptations. So basically choose joy choose during joy. those times. And, and then he, that word all, it, for me, it always correlates to Romans eight twenty eight yep. and 29. See, it says all things work together for them who love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. And verse 29 says that whom he foreknew and did predestinate that they could be conformed to the image of his son. Brother and sister, no matter what it feel like, no matter what it look like, and if you're in the child hall, no matter what it tastes like, count it all joy, because greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. Come on. Joy, joy, joy. God wow, bless you. Love you. Wow. St Pat, brother Steve, thank you so much for thank coming you, on the show, thank man. You. Love you, brother. Uh, it has been a it has been a, a pure joy Praise and blessing God. Praise God. to have you on the show and to hear your full story. Amen. And to know what God has brought you out of and mm. through and all that makes mm. me know that you're that much more of a special person than Praise I already God. knew you were. And Praise God. And thank you so much for for sending all these applications out to everybody who's applying, uh, you know, and, and thank you for pouring your time. You know, I mean, the, the, the internship ended a long time ago, yes, you yes. know, the, mm -hmm. you, you only had to do so many hours right. to finish that. And yes. you just said, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. And you're still going today. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so everybody out there listening, uh, on the Pando verse or writing, writing for applications, just know that, uh, that brother Steve is working hard to get you that application. All right. Amen. We love you, man, and we love appreciate you. you. And uh, thank you for dealing with Snowman during the show. Oh, that's my buddy. Uh, but, uh, that's my nephew. But, but, <laughs> but thank you. You got anything else to say to anybody, any other unit you want to shout out to other than Jester? Uh, well, I want to. I just want to uh, speak God's blessings and personal shout out to all the units. You okay. know, that anybody that uh, I had an opportunity to interact with, know that you and I, our meetings were not just by chance. It was predestined. It was called a divine appointment. And God used it and wants to still use it for our good, man. So uh, I love everybody, man. I don't like everybody, and I don't expect everybody to like me. <laughs> we're not, so called, keep to it like, real. We're not As, called to like everybody. But I'm, I, and if you don't like me, you better not die. I mean, you might not like me, but you better love me or you better not die. <laughs> you, have to, you have to biblically love each other. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Biblically, yes, yes. So, but... Uh, Man, I, I I love everyone, man, and, and and guys, please pray for me as I pray for you. Yeah, that's it, man. Steve, you're you're a perfect example of of uh, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you go through, no matter physically, spiritually, uh, attacks on your body, attacks on your your spirit, mm -hmm. uh, you have overcome Amen. and you have pushed through. Amen. And uh, we appreciate you at Forgiven Felons. Thank mm -hmm. you for being a part of our community mm -hmm. and uh, hanging out with us. You were never a resident at mm -hmm. our at our uh, wow. at our houses, mm -hmm. but you have been a part of our community for a long time, and mm -hmm. we're we're blessed. We're blessed for that. Likewise. And uh, I can't wait to get you to go uh, till you go back in. Yes. Uh, again, I know. I know yeah. you've been missing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I can't wait to go in with your brother. Yes. Likewise. All right. You have a good day, and thank you for not letting your background hold you back, uh, but making make it, it pay, pay you me. Back. Back. I like Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Background Check Podcast, brought to you by Forgiven Felons, helping people with a past realize their future. For more information, please visit ForgivenFelons.org. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and please don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss the latest episode. I'm J.D. Gum, and this has been Background Check.